So in this video, we're going to talk about volume of specialized figures, really. I mean, we're not going to get into the volume of everything because that could take calculus and beyond and that gets moderately messy very quickly. Uh, to keep in mind throughout this whole process, the base is the side that you choose, although in some instances you don't really want to change the base because it makes life easy. Um, and then the height is always 90, deg 90 degrees to the base. It's perpendicular to the base. Uh, and somebody might say, oh, well, yeah, duh, you just draw it from the point down to the base. And that's not for everything. So if I make an attempt and I had to restart the video because my attempt was horrible, that's not a hell of a lot better, to be honest. Okay, it'll work, whatever. My base, if I define it as such, this might be my base, in which case my corresponding height is actually here. That's my height. It's 90 degrees to the base. And so the height is not required to be part of the figure itself. Uh, cones and pyramids can sometimes do this. Although it's kind of rare for anything that we're doing. It's a little odd. Anyway, just kind of keep that in mind that the base and the, and the height have to be perpendicular to one another. And then a couple of easy rules for the basic figures is the volume of one of these basic figures is always the area of the base, whatever that happens to be. If it's a, if it's a square or a rectangle, that's fine, it's length time type. If it's a circle, then you got pi r squared. But it's always the area of the base times the height. And that's it. And then, if I can manage to get it in here, um, if it comes together, so you have a pyramid, and it, well, what if I have a frustrum? No, 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 no. We don't chop the pyramid off yet. But if you have a true pyramid or a true cone, and it comes together, just divide by three. It's over three. So hopefully later on I'll be able to get some audio in there to, to show you how I, how I remember that and how I teach it. Um, of course, the sphere, because circles have to be different than literally everything else. Um, the sphere being the ultimate circle in three dimensions has to be different than everything else, yet not that different. Um, so it's kind of, a, it's, it's kind of an oddity. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. So I have a box. We're going to assume that this is a nice box. So that all of the sides are perpendicular to one another. It's not a parallel pipid, which is a parallelogram in three dimensions. <clears throat> uh, so we have a box so our volume is the area of the base which is our length times our width so length times width times the height the box does not come together we do not divide by three so that's how you just kind of derive this volume formula it's the area of the base times the height so if we do this here we got the area of the base which is four times three times the height, so it's 12. Now, 12 what? Was it 12 cubic feet, 12 cubic inches, 12? It's cubic somethings, it's cubic units. Whatever the units happen to be, and you want them to agree, <laughs> don't, don't make the mistake of like, this is three foot by four foot by one inch, therefore it's, it's 12 cubic feet. The inches are still in there. <laughs> it's bad, it smells really bad. So it's cubic units. Always make sure that your units are in agreement. If we go over to the cylinder here, then the area of the base, the base is a circle. We're only dealing with circular cylinders. So we have the area of the base is equal to pi r squared because of the circle. So that means that the volume of this thing is the area of the base times the height. Now in the case of a cylinder, for most of us, cylinders have straight walls. So the wall itself is the, is the measurement of the height. It doesn't always have to be that way, but most people would be scared if it wasn't. So we just do that. This is going to be pi, which I'm gonna take as 3.14. If you wanna take it as the whole thing, that's fine. Um, or just leave it as pi, who knows. And then your radius, which is three, you gotta square that, and then you multiply by your six. And again, this is going to be in cubic units, making sure that your radius units and your height units are measured in the same unit type. Cubic units. 
So now that's going to be 9, that's going to be 54, 54 times 3 is 162, and then we have to multiply 0 0.14 by, so, ugh, it's going to be about 160. Okay, I'll get the calculator and do the things with it, 3.14 times 3 squared times 6, 169.56. And that's cubic units. Why don't you ever give it a unit? I'm lazy. <laughs> that's what it amounts to. <laughs> well, what if it were meters? Yeah, just write meters instead of units. It's okay. All right. So now we got a couple of more before we get down to the specialized case of the sphere. We have a pyramid. And again, it's just the area of the base. The area of the base is just length times width. And so this, the volume then is going to be the length times the width, and then you multiply by the height. But because, let's put the H in there. But because, because it comes together, then you want to divide by three. So this is really going to be uh, four times five times seven, and then you're going to divide that by three. So it'd be 20, 140 over three. which again is something god awful 46.7 ish so or roughly 46.7 and again cubic units whatever that happens to be okay now the way i remember this and for whatever reason i got this stuck in my head um, when i was young growing up i listened to a lot of the beatles because that's apparently what we had in the, in the house at the time and uh, as I grew older, uh, when I was in my 20s, of course, I was in my 20s in the 90s and early 2000s. And then uh, I was in, I moved up music wise into the 80s, 70s and 80s. So I listened to a little bit of Aerosmith and I heard both versions of Come Together, which I'm sure that there are several out there. Um, I kind of prefer the Aerosmith version, but anytime I'm seeing this and we're talking about volume, I'm thinking volume, like big volume. And so it's, yeah, well, if it comes together, and then it's over three. And so in my head, I'm thinking, come together right now. Wow. Over three. Do, 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 do. And I, that's, that, that's just welcome to my mind. So hopefully that was weird enough that you will remember it. If it wasn't weird enough that you remember it, then uh, yeah, adventure. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so coming over to this cone, it's the, it's the same idea. It's going to start off a lot like the cylinder. Remember that area of the base is going to be pi r squared. And so the volume of this piece is going to be roughly 3.14. The radius squared, which is 4 squared times the height. And that's going to be 7. And then we're going to take that whole mess and we're going to divide by 3 because it comes together right now. 3.14 times 4 squared times 7 divided by 3. You can do all of this in one chunk. You don't have to... You don't have to sit here and, and do a piece and press enter. To, because it's all multiplication to division, it's all in the same level of order of operations. So anything can happen first. That's fine. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend dividing, you know, to start off with because there's nothing to divide by or nothing to divide into. This is going to be roughly 117.23. And that's cubic units, whatever that happens to be. All right, so this, these are kind of the, the, the figures that we talk about. and These are some of the basic ones. Uh, the last basic one is the, is the basketball. It's the sphere, and it's, it's, it's very angry. It really, really, really wants to play with the other figures. It just can't quite do it. So, yeah. Almost follows that whole if it comes together, but it comes together a lot. If you want to know the surface area, so this is not the area. There's no real. It doesn't. It, it, the area of the circle is in there, sort of. But um, the surface area is equal to four pi r uh, pi r squared. So kind of if you multiply, if you take that as the area and you multiply by the height, which is just the radius, you get a third radius in there, and then you divide by three, and that's it. Yeah. So sort of it kind of wants to play, but it's not quite as good. So this is the other, this is the way it's typically given. Um, if you are perhaps more advanced for whatever reason, 
uh, rho tends to be a, a favored three-dimensional radius. And so you might also see this as uh, four-thirds pi. And rho kind of is a goofy p-ish sort of thing. It's the Greek letter rho. It's an r. Look at it. It obviously looks like an r. <laughs> so we just plug things in and let it go. Uh, so our volume is going to be four thirds, and again, you can just multiply, 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 then divide by three. It's fine. And then we have three point one four. If we were really lazy, we could just call it three and cancel those out. Uh, and then our radius for this case is seven, so it'd be seven, and then cubed. So if I could chunk that in here, then I have four divided by three times three point one four times seven, and then the carrot funny thing, and then three. 143603, so that's roughly 143603 cubic units. Now the fun part about this, the sphere is because you only have essentially one measurement three times, whatever the unit the seven is in is the unit that is being cubed at the end of it. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about all the extra crap that you do in the other figure. So that's the basics behind it. Um, you can chop any of these off. You can take a cone, flip it upside down. It's still found the volume the same way. Then take half a sphere, put it on top, and poof, you have an ice cream cone. So you just take the volume of the cone and add half the volume of the corresponding sphere, and you're done. That's it. That's, that's basics of geometry for volume.